Hey, New Life Church. I want to tell you, I'm very proud of you. We're having a great year as a church. I know that you are growing or trying to, but I want to encourage you with something towards the end of the year. Keep the Lord first. Even in the Ten Commandments, he says, don't have any other gods in front of me. You know what I've noticed about my life? My story, it's not about me. It's got to be about him. Sometimes I make it about me. And when I do, I get too worried. I get too busy. I forget to worship him. So not this year. Let's keep him first. And with that in mind, I want to encourage you with the speaker that we have this weekend to take note because his name is Jason Kimbrough. Many of you know him. Uh, he's kind of a scrawny guy, he doesn't work out much, but you know, he's not very handsome either. But besides these things, the brother is solid, weird looking, but solid. And uh, he has a lot of kids. No one knows how many he has. He's a great leader. He helps me write sermons. I talk to him all the time. If I hear something funny, I'm going to tell him. If I think of something halfway smart, I am a Cajun, I'll call him because I love him. He pastors in Fayetteville, and he's going to start a lot of other campuses. So I've asked him to come in and to teach us the word. Get ready, because this is going to help you. In the meantime, give my friend a hand, Jason Kimbrough. All right. Come on, keep your hands together for everyone joining with us online and other campuses. We welcome you. And, uh, man, good to be here. I love Pastor Rick and Michelle and the BZ family. And, uh, man, it's, uh, it's been a fun journey just to serve underneath them over the last 16 years. I mean, just learning. I mean, I came here when I was in college and um, just started learning underneath them, learning leadership and learning how to be a pastor, and it's just been so fun. When uh, we moved to Fayetteville, we were the 10th campus, and now we have 18, and just seeing, seeing everything expand, it's just amazing. Uh, but we, we live in Fayetteville. We, we love it. We uh, recently, about a year ago, got a building. We were set up here for four years, and we have seen tremendous growth. The building that we're in, uh, some of you are familiar with Fayetteville. It actually used to be the Malco Razorback Cinema, and so it used to be a movie theater, then it was a gym, and uh, we have a couple came up to me in our church like, hey, we, our first date was in this building. Uh, th their first date was a movie in that building like 20 years ago. And uh, so it's just a cool thing. We're seeing lots of growth, uh, people getting saved, marriages being healed, and uh, we're trying to raise money to actually expand and do some balcony seating. And so it's just a fun time in Fayetteville uh, as far as church, and um, we're having a blast. If you're ever up for a Razorback game, come worship with us. It'll be, it'll be fun. We'll call the hogs in church. It'll be weird, okay? Is everybody good today? Y'all feeling good? Still in a food coma? It's Christmas season now. The Bible says you can now put up your decorations. This is, this is what the Bible says. It's also NLC policy. And um, word on the street is some of you listen to Christmas music in July. And uh, you're scaring the children. And um, even, even weirder, some of you listen to it in January. Don't be a monster, okay? But it's, it's an exciting, it's an exciting season. I love Christmas. Uh, great, great time around NLC. We got candlelight coming up. I love the Advent thing just to focus and slow down. And, you know, Jesus, God, God tells us a lot in Scripture to slow down, you know, to slow down and, and, to, and to really enjoy what we have. Uh, turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 if you have a Bible or maybe an app on your phone. If not, I'm going to have it on the screen. And uh, I want to talk to you for a little bit about the seasons that we go through, the seasons that we go through. Ecclesiastes is one of the wisdom books. Job and Proverbs are the other two. Uh, most scholars all agree that King Solomon wrote this book, uh, Ecclesiastes. It starts out in this book saying, uh, meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. And, uh, you know, I, was, I took a, a group of college students on a mission trip to inner city Baton Rouge one year. This was years ago. And... Um, and I walked up, when we got there, long road trip, we got there, I walked in to check in and see who was our leader, our host, who was going to host our team for that week. I said, my name is Jason Kimbrough, and uh, we're from New Life Church in Conway, and I uh, just want to know who I need to check in with. And they said, okay, you need to check in with Kimbrough. I said, no, I'm, I'm, that, I'm Kimbrough. <laughs> I'm Jason Kimbrough from New Life. We just drove in in a van. We're sweaty. We're hungry. Who do we, who we need it? Where we go? Where we sleep? Where we put our bags? Because you, you need to check in with Kimbro. I said, I Kimbro. 
no, you need to check in with Kim, bro. I said, bro, I Kim, bro. He said, no, Kim, bro. Apparently the lady's name was Kim, bro. B-R-A-U-D, pronounced bro. I was like, what does this mean? God, you know? And so the author of Ecclesiastes starts out by saying, everything is meaningless. It's like, it doesn't really make sense. He goes on, he, he, this word meaningless is used 38 times in this book, and it's actually from the Hebrew word havel. Havel means a vapor or a breath. Vapor or a breath. It's, it's, life is vapor. You, you might recall James 4.14 when James says life is like a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. I, I, on my off day, I used to go fly fishing every day on my off day. And I would get there. And when I would get there, I'd get there early in the morning and there would be a thick fog. And I'd fish for a little bit and I'd turn around and the fog would be gone. This is what uh, James says in James 4 and what basically what Solomon is saying in this book is that this is what life is like. He, he goes on to describe that life is very fleeting. It's very temporary. That before you know it, we're all going to die. And all of our things that we put our trust in, our status, our wealth, our possessions, they're basically going to die too. And, and, and this is the realest approach that Solomon takes. He, he, he basically, he's standing back. He's getting a big picture view of this life. And he calls it basically an enigma, a paradox. And he's like, what do we do with all this? And this all kind of seems kind of depressing until the end of the book. And it talks about how we should all seek the wisdom of God and the fear of God. But in Ecclesiastes chapter three, this is where I want to go. It says this about the seasons that we go through. Ecclesiastes chapter three. If you're ready, say I'm ready. It says, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And then in verse 9 he says, what do people really get for all their hard work? He said, I've seen the burden God has placed on us all. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded there's nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat. Can I get an amen? And drink. No one knows what to do here. <laughs> drink your Dr. Thunder. Uh, and enjoy the fruits of their labor for these are gifts from God. For everything, there's a season. And in every season, it's not ideal. There is no ideal season. So, he says, you, we do really just need to enjoy and eat and drink and enjoy the seasons. Because life is short, we only have a certain period of time. What season are you in right now? I'll give you a few examples. Maybe you're in a season of busyness. Maybe you're in a season of busyness. Uh, when I ask people, you know, just small talk, you know, I'll meet people and, or see people at the church or whatever. I'm like, how you doing? Like busy. Like a badge of honor. Busy. I'm busy. I work. I'm a hard worker. I have a life. I have friends. I have stuff to do. I'm popular. I'm not a nerd. Here's what people never say. If I say, how you doing? Oh, I'm just relaxed. I have this like quietness to my soul right now. Just had a lot of free time to pray and pray for the nations. That never happens. Busy. We're, we're, our, our family's in a busy season. We just had our fourth kid. His name's Knox. I have a picture here. Uh, he is... Um, don't let that sweater fool you. There's some rolls going on underneath that sweater. And uh, he's, he's amazing. 
but it's a busy season. I get home from a long day, and my wife hands me a baby. <laughs> and there's three other kids like, Daddy, homework, bye, bye, practice football. Bye, bye. It's busy. Baby season is busy. Number two, what about season of temptation? Season of temptation. Maybe it just feels like in your life right now, you're getting hit with temptation. It seems like every day you wake up, it's like a scheme to get you to fall. A scheme, a plan from the enemy to get you back into some old ways or into some new addictions. What about a season of pain? You know, no one ever chooses a season of pain, uh, but we all go through it. Maybe there's some, uh, you know, relational tension in your life. It's causing you a lot of pain. Uh, maybe you have a son or a daughter who's away from God. That's painful. Uh, maybe there's some marriage pain in your life. Uh, maybe there's a lack of purpose. Maybe unanswered prayers. Maybe you're just going through a season of pain. Or maybe you're in a season of comfort. And some of you are like, uh, I'll take number four. <laughs> I'll trade you. But in seasons of comfort, uh, it's hard to grow. It's hard to grow when you're on the mountaintop. It's hard to grow. And you know what? The temptation when you're in seasons of comfort or like abundance, when everything keeps, seems to be going good, maybe you got a lot of money in the bank and work's going great and promotions and all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But during seasons of comfort, the temptation is to re- start trusting in yourself and not rely on God. What about you're in a season of growth? Maybe you're growing in God. Like maybe you're starting to learn the the real, true heart of God. I know this is where some of you are at. You're like, I didn't know it could be like this. I didn't know I could serve Christ and have integrity and have a pure and innocent heart and still have fun. I didn't know. Some of you, you're, you're growing and you're growing by unlearning. You're unlearning all the religious habits that you were told growing up. But this creates uh, other decisions that you have to make. Like who your circle is, who you trust. How do you explain this to some of your family? Or a season of growth. Maybe uh, you're in a season of grief. Maybe uh, you've experienced the loss of a loved one and it hurts and, and no one really understands. And you know, people checked on you the first couple weeks and brought you a meal, and, but no one checks on you anymore. And, and this is when the real grief is hitting, is a few weeks after, a few months after, maybe a year after. Maybe you didn't lose a loved one, but you did lose a loved one. Like you, you didn't lose them, they didn't pass, but there's been tension. And it's like you're grieving the loss of a friend or a parent, or you've drifted apart and it, it hurts because it was someone that you love, someone that you felt close to. And maybe you're in a season of dryness. You ever been through a season of dryness where you just don't, you don't feel God's presence. You, you don't feel God. I know we shouldn't trust our feelings, but it's like, man, if I could just feel God, I just don't, I don't feel spiritual. Uh, I pray. It feels like it's falling flat. Uh, I read the Bible. It feels boring to me. I go to church. It feels like everyone else is ahead of me. Everyone's all praising the Lord, you know, and uh, I just don't even want to see them. I don't want to see anybody. No one gets me. I'm just going through a season of, of dryness. Maybe you're in a season of waiting. Oh, I hate being in the waiting room. Oh, waiting rooms are so gross. It's germs, sick people coughing and hacking, outdated magazines. It's just weird. It's just close proximity. Everybody's whispering. It just feels. But that's where you are, some of you, that's where you're at in your life. You're waiting on God's promises. You're waiting on God to answer a prayer. What season are you in? Uh, what about a season of doubt? You're, you're doubting your faith. You have all these simple-minded friends. who are like, I just trust Jesus, you know? And you're like, I'll have a really deep question that will you won't know how to answer. So I may not even ask you that question. So you don't feel heard. You don't feel understood. And you have all these deep questions about God. And uh, you're, just, you're just going through a season of doubt, a season of confusion. One of my favorite things to do, and it's really weird, and it's why I'm not teaching on parenting, but... Um, uh, <laughs> In seasons that aren't Christmas, like September, you know, I'll go wake up my kids at 6 a.m. every morning. But uh, a couple months ago, I think it was like September, like, I woke them up like this. Hey, Pierce, it's time to get up. 
Merry Christmas. <laughs> Santa came. All your presents are laid out on the, oh man, he hooked you up this year. Come on, there's a fresh layer of powdered snow outside. <laughs> Mommy made some hot coke. He just looks up so confused. I'm like, <laughs> just confused, you know. But maybe that's how you feel about life. You just like, you're so confused about your life right now. You're going through a season of doubt. Oh, oh, what, I know, it's weird. Uh, <laughs> creepy dad. What about a season of transition? You, you, maybe you just got married. Maybe you just got divorced. Maybe you just had a kid. Maybe your, your kids just left and you're an empty nester. Or maybe your kids that you thought left just came back home. <laughs> you have more laundry to do. No matter what season that you're in, would you, would you write this down? I want you to really get this. God is good through every season. Some of you need to hear that today. That God is good through every season. He is faithful. He is gracious. He's a good God through every season. He does not change. Hebrews uh, 13.8 says this. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He, he does not change. It's his immutability. In other words, God's goodness isn't seasonal. It doesn't shift. It doesn't change with the seasons. And no matter what season you're going through, God can give grace for you in any season. And this is part of life as we go through the ebbs and flows, is we have to be able as we grow up in the Lord, navigate these seasons. I want to give you four truths about seasons. The first one is this. Every season is different. Every season is different. Uh, the earth orbits on its axis, tilting at 23.5 degrees. This is how seasons are created. They're start, every season starts with a solstice or an equinox. We go through different seasons. Winter, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, and, and sometimes in Arkansas it gets hot and then it gets cold again, you know. Uh, spring, it's like, it's, it's rainy, uh, the trees start to bloom, it's baseball season, uh, we can open the windows, the birds chirp, all that. Summer, it gets hot, it's time to go to the beach, it's time to go on summer vacation, kids are out of school, and then turns into fall, it's time for fall, my favorite season, football season. I love the weather. Um, pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin spice Oreos, pumpkin spice toothpaste, just everything. <laughs> There's different seasons. And you're going to go through different seasons in your life. And it's not fair to compare your season with what someone else is going through. Uh, our worship leader, his name's Andrew Richmond, a few months ago, it was my birthday, and all I wanted to do for my birthday was go play golf because I'm bad at golf, but I want to be good at golf. I'm working on my golf game, and I just want to go play golf with a few friends. So we were going to go play, had a tee time, and Andrew Richmond, our worship leader, he texted the group that we're going and said, I have a feeling that somebody's going to hit a hole in one today. And of course, I'm like, that's me. It's my birthday. <laughs> He's a good God. <laughs> I kid you not on hole number three. Andrew Richmond hits a hole in one. <laughs> Check out this picture. Don't take a picture. That was supposed to be me. I hate that picture. Take that picture down. It's like, that's not fair. He prophesied his own hole in one on my birthday outing? Where are you, God? It's not fair. It's not fair to compare different seasons that we go through. In, in chapter four, the same book, Solomon said, then I observed that most people are motivated to success because they envy their neighbors. But this too is meaningless, like chasing the wind. And sometimes we envy different seasons when we're, we're supposed to learn and grow and be sharpened and be refined by every season that we go through. Number two, every season is enjoyable. Every season is enjoyable. Uh, if you can't avoid them, enjoy them. 
We can't dictate them. We have to learn how to go through every one of them, right? And in, extract the goodness of them. Now, this is the part where it's hard to preach because uh, we all go through the seasons of pain and grief. You know what I mean? Like, a few years ago, when we were trying to have our fourth kid, we, we got pregnant, and then the Friday before Easter, which is a, bi- it's a big weekend for the church, big weekend for me, I'm preaching a lot of services. Something started to not feel right. Ashley was like, I, we need to go get, we need to go to the doctor. Went to the doctor, come to find out it was a pretty good chance that we had miscarried. And we had to go through that weekend kind of being 90% sure that our baby was dead. And, and so I'm at our church um, preaching about the resurrection of Jesus and how Jesus is alive and trying to put my focus there when all I can think about is the pain and suffering that my wife is going through, knowing she probably has to have surgery on Monday and, and knowing that uh, how, where do you go from here? How do you do this? And some of you have been through far worse than that. But when you're in it, it's painful. And so the last thing I want to do is be insensitive to some of you that are going through seasons of pain and go, just enjoy it. Because that's not, that's not, it's not as simple as that. Uh, but as much as we can, as much as we can go through even the painful seasons and try to, try to know that God is good through every season and try to enjoy what we can out of every season. Uh, in verse 12, it says, So I concluded there's nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. Like, as long as we're on earth, enjoy as much as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. Would you write this down? There is no perfect season. There's no perfect season. Just like there's no perfect man, there's no perfect woman, there's no perfect spouse, there's no perfect parent, there's no perfect church, there's no perfect leader, there is no perfect season. We, we do not experience perfection until heaven. So we're on earth. And so what's, what's really helped me is to lower my expectations of perfection, even though I tend to be a perfectionist. We just know that we're on earth, and earth is temporary. It's, it's flawed, and there's going to be imperfect people, imperfect men and women, imperfect leaders, imperfect seasons. There is no perfect season. You ever had that friend that complains about every season? The winter comes around, oh, it's cold. I'm ashy. Oh, where's my jacket? Where's my performance fleece? Oh. I can't wait till spring. Spring's going to be lit. Gets to spring. Oh, my allergies. I need some Kleenex. Oh, the rain. I hate the rain. The rain gets sent me into a deep, deep. It triggers me, okay? Can't wait till summer. I'm going to get my beach body. I'm going I'm to work out. I'm going to get lean. I'm going to lay up by the pill. <laughs> summer comes around. It's hot. Oh, Lord, come quick. It's hot. <laughs> Can't wait till fall. If fall, y'all, it's going to be great. I love watching dead leaves fall. You know, fall's going to be awesome. It gets to fall. There's only two weeks of fall and back to winter. You know, that's just the way it goes. I just don't want to be that person that complains about every season. There's just so much to enjoy about the life that God has given us. I don't want to be a victim expecting life to be perfect because I chose Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, life is hard sometimes and uh, it's difficult. Philippians 4, this is a powerful passage of scripture. It's even more powerful when you understand that when Paul wrote this, he wrote it from prison. He said, For I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Now, notice. The word learned. Like, we don't come out of the womb understanding and knowing how to be content. We have to learn it. It's a learned behavior. It means it's okay if you're not there yet. You can learn it, right? If you're already there, it's because you learned it. For I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. So he's been on both sides. I have learned the secret. He calls it a secret means not many people really understand. Not many people really know. It's a secret. 
of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. It is only through Jesus that we can ever have the strength to enjoy every season. It takes the resurrection power of Jesus to enjoy every season. So I encourage you, if you're a kid, a teenager, I remember when I was a, a kid, I was like, I can't wait till I'm grown, I can drive. You know, I can't wait till I get, I get a real job, I'm gonna make some money. <laughs> and then I became an adult, and like, I have to buy my own socks? This is weird, I worked hard for this money. I have to do my own laundry? I have to pay, what's, what you, what's a utility bill? You know what I mean? If you're a kid, a teenager, enjoy the season that you're in. Maybe you're single and you're ready to Christian mingle. <laughs> but God hasn't shown up yet. Just try to enjoy the season of independence that you have because when you get married, your life is not your own. Marriage, marriage does not cure loneliness. A lot of times we think, if I could just get married, if I could just get married, I would be a whole person. Mm. If you're miserable when you're single, you'll be miserable when you're married. You'll just have someone to dump all that misery on. <laughs> it is what it is. So, so you're in the waiting room, waiting on that special someone that God's going to bring you. But while you're single, guys, enjoy your money. I mean, <laughs> just enjoy it. <laughs> Ladies, enjoy a clean house and watch all the HGTV you can. <laughs> Maybe you're uh, a married couple and you want kids, but you don't have kids yet. Uh, enjoy your healthy sleep patterns. Um, <laughs> Often, my wife and I will be like, what did we do before we had kids? I'm like, I'll tell you what we did. Whatever we wanted. <laughs> it was awesome. E enjoy every season. You won't get this time back. Maybe you have kids. Uh, everybody tells me, older, older people, older families, older parents, they say, enjoy it. It goes by so fast. And it's true. Someday we're going to wish that we could <clears throat> push that stroller, rock that baby, change those diapers. Maybe not that, but most of them. <laughs> And we wish we could go back, and we won't be able to go back. We won't be able to go back and be a father to our 11-year-old. We won't get that time back. We won't get the chance to go shopping with our daughter. We won't get the chance to, to do some things. It, the time will have already passed us by. Maybe you're at the la latter end of your life, you know, you only have a, a decade left or a few years left or... Who knows how many days you have left. Every day is a gift from God. You know what? And you're a gift from God too. Our church needs you. We need your wisdom. We need your presence. Everybody needs you. You're needed. Enjoy every season. And it takes the power of God to enjoy every season. Uh, every season is different. Every season is enjoyable. But number three, every season is temporary. Every season is temporary. All the hunters know this because... Deer season ends or duck season ends and they wipe a tear from their eye. It happens so fast. You know, seasons change fast. They come and they go. And uh, this is important for us to understand. This is why we don't trust in seasons. We trust in Jesus. And the reality is, wherever you're at today, with one phone call, with one moment with God, with one text message, your season could change for better or for worse. Seasons can change fast, quickly. I think about the story in the Bible with the woman who had the issue of blood. She, she had an issue, a medical issue. The Bible says she had spent all the money she had on doctors trying to understand what was going on with this issue that she had. 12 years, 12 years of dealing with a bleeding issue. 12 years of being uh, categorized by her condition, grouped with lepers, not able to touch anyone. She couldn't shake anyone's hand, high five anyone, hug anyone. She was an outcast. 12 years of embarrassment, 12 years of praying and seeking God and praying the same prayer, not knowing if it would ever, ever mean anything. And the Bible says she reached out and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible says at that instant she was healed. Everything can change in a moment. Galatians 6, 9 said, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't give up. 
Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Man, God's timing is everything. A good joke requires God's timing, right? A good steak requires good timing. A good picture requires good timing. You ever had someone take your picture at the wrong angle? It's like, no, no, do it again. I'm not a heifer, you know. Hold it up, hold it up. But God's timing, you don't want to open your own door to a different season. You just got to know that God's timing is everything. God's, God's timing. Every season is temporary. And then number four is we closed. Every season is purposed. Every season is purposed. In verse 11, we read this earlier. It said, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Basically saying, like, we don't naturally see the big picture, but God does. He's got this big story he's writing. Our story fits into that. He can bring purpose out of any season, even the painful seasons. Somehow, in his bigness, in his sovereignty, he can actually take the seasons that we go through that were unjust or painful, and he can turn it into something good. Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose for them. God can make any season have a purpose. I want you to know that today, that God always brings purpose out of the seasons that we go through. What season are you in? What season are you in? You know, Jesus, God sent his son, Jesus, to this earth for a season. And then he was crucified. He was, he was put into a tomb. People thought he was dead. He was only there for a season of three days, three nights. He rose from the dead. And he came back to earth for a season. And then he ascended into heaven, but he's only there for a season. And one day he's going to come back. He's going to come back for the church. He's going to come back for those who believed in him, who trusted in him with their life. And we're going to go to heaven for eternity where there will no longer be any seasons. There will be no season of pain. There will be no periods of time. There will be no waiting room. There will be no grief. There will be no confusion. Everything we will feel and see and understand perfectly. And we will sit in heaven worshiping God and being in the, his presence forever. But until then, we're here. This is where we're at. From, from this moment till the day God calls us home, I want every person to listen to me, every father, every husband, every wife, every mother, every teenager, every college student, every single person, every young adult, every, everybody in the room. And, and from, from this day right now, this moment right now, till the day God calls us home, we have an opportunity to live every day, letting God use us, giving all glory to him. And no matter what season we go through, we just point to God's goodness. God is good through every season. Would you bow your heads? We're going to go into